What is up? I'm Jojo Dawson and welcome to Jojo in the morning. Really excited about this day. This is one of those days that I simply could not have sat in a chair in one of my offices and done this video. And so I just knew I had to stand up, got my cup of coffee, matches my cap. So my wife would say I'm kind of color coordinating. And what I want to talk to you, hang on. Uh-huh. One thing I want to talk to you about today is never, ever, ever for any reason, under any circumstance, no trial, test, or tribulation should ever, ever make you or cause you to give up. Okay? The Bible, numerous places, talks about if you fall down, get back up. It also says if you see other people fall down, help them back up. So what I want to talk to you today is about adversity. We all have adversity. We all face adversity and we all go through things. One, we live in a natural world. There is natural things that happen to people. If you bring home 5,000 a month, and your bills are 6,000 a month, you're gonna have financial problems, that's natural, okay? There's so many times in life when people do things, they bring adversity onto their self, okay? The Bible says people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. There's a lot of times people are destroying themselves because they've never been trained in that area. I've seen people who struggle spiritually all the days of their life because they have never been trained by a mature believer, a kingdom-minded person who operates in the apostolic prophetic realms, okay? They may not understand the entrepreneuring mindset. They don't have a CEO mindset. Therefore, they struggle financially or they could struggle spiritually. This is why you need to be around people who are wise. And in life, let's talk about this spiritual body. If you're struggling spiritually, get around people who are spiritually wise. Get around people who know the word, who pray, who like to fast. If you struggle financially, get around people who make two, three, four, five, ten times more than you make. If, if you struggle in marriage, find somebody who has a good marriage. If your kid's acting bad, get around somebody who's got good kids. You know, be around people. Find where you're weak. Find a teacher, an instructor in that area, and you won't have to go through as much as you're going through adversity, Okay. If you're going through an adversity, go through it one time. I remember one time I was going through something and I went to somebody who was a mentor in one field of my life and went to him in, in a subject over here that he had no knowledge of, but he tried his best, but it didn't help me. When we go through adversity, we always want to blame the devil a lot of times the devil had nothing to do with it. It was us having a lack of knowledge, nor did we seek out knowledge. That's what I love about books. There's a book written about everything. There's YouTube videos about everything. There's podcasts about everything. You can Google and find a lot of answers, okay? So why do I wanna talk about this? Because whenever I do videos, I always offer prayer at the end and people send me prayer requests. And I'm gonna say, I, I usually say between 85 to 90% of the people who send me a prayer request, I could talk to them for three minutes and it would be solved. Because a lot of it is knowledge that I've gained along the path of life, okay? A lot of it is something that, yes, we pray, and I do pray for every, every, every one of them, but it's something that is simple. Example, a guy messaged me, and said, uh, hey man, I have to make $400 more a month. I have to make $400 more a month. I said, how long have you been in your job? He said, 15 years. I said, okay, well, what do you, you know, what do you, what do you make an hour? And he told me, and I said, okay, go to your boss and say, hey, can I work an hour over Monday through Thursday, four days? I mean, I've been here a long time. I do you a good job. Would you allow me to do that? And if he did that, it would be around 600 before taxes. After taxes, he would bring home, you know, 450, 475. He went to his boss and his boss said, yeah. He came back and said, oh, Joe, thank you for that wisdom. I, I said, yeah, man, 
but you have not because you ask not. See, a lot of times adversity comes and it's something that is simple. Like whenever I'm going through something, I call my intercessors and then I go on an extra extended fast and I pray, make declarations, decrees, and I go through it. Now, one thing we're not allowed to ever do in life is throw in the towel. We cannot throw in the towel in life. You got too many people depending on you. You got too many people counting on you, okay? Therefore, when you throw in the towel because you can't take anything else, everybody that looks up to you counts on you and depends on you, you threw in the towel for them. I'm going to be honest with you. There's been times in my life when uh, I was kind of like Mufasa, the Lion King, and put my, you know, put my wife to bed and prayed over my kids and put them to bed. Then I go in my prayer room and I cry like a baby and say, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know how we're going to get through this, but I know one thing, God, I have not missed you. You have called me into this. You gave me prophetic words. You called me into this, God, and I'm in this hook, line, sinker. Listen, if you ain't if you ain't Southern, you don't know catfish and you don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm talking hook, line, sinker, everything. Okay, I'm in all in, 100% in this thing that you've called me to, Lord. Now, I need the provision for the vision to come through. And I need the gifts of administration and help to come alongside me, God. But I'm in on what you've called me to. Now, in the natural realm, it looks like nothing's happening. But God, I need you to come through in a supernatural way. I will wave my towel, but I will not throw it in. I will not give up because my face is set like Flint, I'm coming for you this morning on JoJo in the morning. I'm telling you, some of you are tired. You're weary. You want to you wanna give up. Let me tell you, take your small break. Get you a cup of coffee. Man, that's good. Pray for a little bit. Wash your face. Iron you a shirt. Put it on and absolutely attack your day by the Spirit of the Lord. When you do that, everything's going to change. See, adversity, adversity introduces a person to their self. You know, when, whenever you come up against a hardship, when you come against... People say, man, I hit a roadblock. I hit a wall. I hit a dead end. That's great. Are you going to stop and turn around and go back? Or are you going to find a way? The Bible says when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can defeat a troop. You can jump over a wall. So if there's a, a wall in front of you and adversity is coming at you, you can go around it. You can go over it. You can go through it but you cannot back up. We will not relent. We, we will not back up. Listen, apostolic prophetic people don't quit. I remember there's been times in my life that if I would have quit, if I would have quit, nobody would have blamed me, but I kept going. I remember one night I was at the point that I wanted to quit so bad. Now, it's not in my nature it's not in my DNA to quit, but everything in me wanted to quit. Everybody was asleep in the house. And um, I remember I, I walked in my bedroom and my wife, she's an angel, was sitting there asleep. And I just kind of sat there and I just stared at her beautiful face for five minutes, fighting back tears because I was going through some stuff that was just, um, it was hard and, and I'd been fasting and praying and just, it seemed like if everything in the world could have came against me, spiritual sons had came against me, spiritual fathers had came up against me. They ganged up on me. My friends ganged up on I me. Mean, it was crazy what my wife and I were going through. And I was staying strong for my family. And I remember I, I was staring at my wife and I said this right here, she does not deserve for me to give up. I walked in to my, my daughter's bedroom and I just sat there, I was, kind of trying to cry under my breath. I looked at my two daughters and I said, they do not deserve their dad to give up right now. 
Then I walked into my, my son's room. He was probably five, six months old. And I sat there and I looked at my, my son and I said, this young man does not deserve dad to give up. So I stayed up for probably about another two, three hours and just started praying in the spirit, praying to the Lord. And I said, God, I don't know how we're gonna get through this. It was a time that a prophetic person called me and said, you literally just had the rug of life pulled out from under you, unexpected, but you're going to keep going and you will be better off because of it. What these, all these people did to you was not of God. It was out of jealousy and out of the flesh. You have the backing of heaven on your side. Do not quit. That was a pretty good prophetic word. So then I went to bed, slept a few hours, got up the next day and told my wife, I said, hey, it's all gonna be okay. It's going to be okay. Since that day, since that moment, we've been going up. Now, like stock market, you got your ups and downs, but we've been going up. We're rising. I've never forget that day when, when I could have thrown in the towel like I said, spiritual sons told me you need to quit ministry. People I thought were spiritual fathers said, you need to quit ministry. You're not called to this. You're really not called to, to do ministry. And, you know, all these people came against me. But you know what? There was something on the inside of me. It said, even though I'm going through this, adversity is at every side of me. I will fight because my wife deserves it. My children deserve it. You know, I didn't have a YouTube channel. We didn't have a church. I didn't have an apostolic network back then. I didn't have any of that. I was even traveling yet in ministry. That next morning, things took off. Things took off. And I remember a few weeks later, I was in prayer. I was, it was about midnight. I was praying. And the Holy Spirit said, what's in your heart? And I started naming everything. He said, do it. And as you start doing it, and as you start flowing in it, I will multiply the cause that I have on your life. I will multiply things and you will do greater things than you could ever even imagine. And from that moment, that was like a second wind of me coming against just adversity and the enemy. You know, the enemy, John 10, 10 comes to kill, steal and destroy. You can't listen to him trying to kill, steal and destroy but you got to keep going because the rest of the scripture says, but my God came to give you life and life more abundantly. Y'all hear me on this Jojo in the morning show, broadcast, whatever you want to call it. We don't, the only reason we pick up the towel is to wave it around. We ain't throwing it in. Some of you got so much adversity coming at you right now. You thought about giving up. You can't give up. There's too much of God in you to give up. You hear what I'm telling you early in the morning? You got too much God in you to give up. You got to keep going. Sometimes you just need to wake up, get your strong cup of... Hey, you know what? I was going to actually call this show Early Morning Joe, but some other people have called their little show something like that. And so I couldn't. So my wife said, put your name first. Jojo in the morning. Let's go. I'm telling you. Queen Esther, before she was uh, uh, Queen Esther, had a word. If I perish, I perish. I'm going to do this. I'm going to stand up for my calling. I'm going to stand up for, for my people group. I'm going to stand up. If I perish, I perish. You know, if you roll with the apostolic, you know, fight for the apostolic. If you roll prophetic, flow, you know, with the prophetic, you know, whatever you're called to, whatever you're called to in life, you got to flow. Esther stood up. She stood up. She got a group of people to fast and pray. Adversity was waiting on her, but she faced it head on. Man, I think about John the Baptist. He knew what he was doing. He knew he was just creating a mess. He was creating a scene, but he also knew what his, his mandate was to come against the culture of the time. There's times you're going to have to stand for stuff. Man, when I started preaching revival and awakening 10 years ago, I had pastors all over our city telling me to hush your mouth. I said, I ain't going to hush. 
I have people call me, quit preaching that stuff. You're just going to rile people up. You talk about fasting and praying all the time. Don't nobody want to fast and pray. I'm like, man, whatever. People got to understand. When I start preaching about prophetic ministry, people are like, man, we don't need that stuff. I start preaching on apostolic ministry. People say, we don't need that stuff. I start talking about the kingdom of God. Man, nobody wanted to hear that stuff. You know what people preaching all over our city now? Apostolic prophetic kingdom. I tell people, uh, like that old song, I was country when country wasn't cool. I was kingdom when kingdom wasn't cool. People weren't talking about that. The world done got so crazy. Everybody wants to know about the kingdom now. They want to know because they don't want to be associated with this crazy worldly kingdom. Now they're like, hey, no, what you, it's so funny. I got these, these people, they got churches. Their church is like 15, 20 times bigger than mine calling me. Said, hey, uh, tell me about this kingdom stuff you've been talking about. <laughs> Listen, guys, adversity is going to come at you if you're called to do anything great. I remember one day, about, about, probably about 12, 15 years ago, the NBA Finals was over. And this one particular player won the league MVP, the Finals MVP, and also his team won the Finals. That's like the, the trifecta, man. I'm talking about... League MVP, Finals MVP, and his team won the championship. The next morning, all they did was dog him out on Sports Center. Why is that? Because if you ever do anything great in your life, you will have so many more haters and critics. But listen, the opinions of other people will not help you to fulfill your calling or pay your rent or your bills. Okay? Who cares what they say? Now me, when, when people come against me, it just fuels my fire. It just, it just fuels my fire because I know I'm doing something right. So if you ever are doing anything great with your life, if you open a business, you open, start a ministry, whatever it is, you know, and people start coming against you, listen, if God has told you to do it and he's in it, you need to keep rolling. You got to keep going. Adversity will be at every corner of your life, but you have to understand a few things. One, you got to figure out how to separate from people that are constantly coming against you. And also you need to put yourself in a safe place. Like I had a, a friend of mine, a preacher, also very, very, very successful businessman. He said, I have a rule in my life. And he said that my ministry is big. And, and he said my, my business is is so extremely massive that I don't have time to manage critical comments or answer back or even allow them in. He said, I have a rule because how God has advanced me. If someone comes against me and writes one negative thing, block, hide, delete, gone. And then if they message back, can you refriend me? Hey, can you unblock me? I cannot. My destiny is so great. If you came against me once, you'll come against me twice. I just have to go. I have to grow. I have to do what I'm called to do. And, you know, there's been times that I've done stuff like that. People say, hey, man, man, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. I won't write that negative stuff on your page. I'm sorry. And like back in the day, I would let them back in. The next day, they would do it again. No, you, you got to understand when God grows your ministry, your business, your family, there are certain people that you must protect your family from. There are certain people that you got to protect your calling from. See, you got to treat your destiny. What's on the inside of you? Your prophetic words like a new, newborn baby. You just don't let anybody hold your baby. You just don't let anybody around your destiny. I remember I was talking to one of Steve Hill's spiritual sons. And he said, Steve Hill used to always tell him this. He was the evangelist of Brownsville. That in life, you need to make your inner circle smaller and smaller and smaller. The more you grow in, in life, the more successful you are, the more your business grows or your ministry grows. More people will try to get around you, but your inner circle must be small. Okay? And it's like you have all of these friends, but as your circle gets smaller, you will be around the right ones. And a lot of times in life, now you have a lot of acquaintances but, but the less friends that you have, like four or five strong friends, you'll, you'll succeed in life because you're trying to manage friendships 
that are actually coming against you. Some of the most hurtful things that will ever happen to you in life is when their so-called friends that you have will hurt you, stab you in the back, come against you. Now understand this, if you're growing in ministry and they're not, they'll come against you. If you're growing in business and they're not, they'll come against you. Don't let it bother you. It's just things that are common to man. This is how things are. You have to figure out when adversity comes your way, is it a spiritual thing? Do I need to fast and pray or is it a natural thing? I've seen some people going through the same natural thing for over 20 years, for 20 years, yet they will never change. They will never get out of their adversity. You've gotta be aggressive about going after adversity to complete the call that God has on your life. You gotta go at it with everything you got, friends. Man, I hope this is helping somebody today. Strong-minded people, champions for the Lord, in whatever area God puts you in, they understand when adversity comes, you deal with it and you move on. A lot of times in life, one of the hard things for a lot of people is when they move forward and advance with God, a lot of their family members and friends, they don't advance with them. And they realize that their relationship with them can pull them strong. There's a lot of close friends you have that need to be acquaintances. There's a lot of people that are acquaintances that need to be close friends. You have to manage your life. You need to pay more attention to your life. I hope this is helping somebody today. This is some early morning gold right here that some of you, some of you aren't reaching your potential because you have one wrong relationship in your life. You have one person in your family that you have given way too much of your ear to. Listen to me. My friend, the Holy Spirit is so, he's such a good friend. Whenever someone's talking to me and I feel a check in my spirit, I'm like, whoop, sorry. I, I don't want to hear it. I, I'm, I'm just, I don't, I don't. We like to say that Jesus, the Holy Spirit is our best friend. But the thing is when he checks us up, do we follow what he's saying? Okay, man, adversity's out there. It's looking for you. But if you find the road to peace, if you follow peace, the peace of God that passes all understanding, you will live a life that you could only dream of. And in life, quit doing the good things and only do the God things. I was talking to somebody who serves on five different committees at their church. They said, I feel so empty inside yet I'm always helping people. I said, you do all of this stuff and you stay busy yet you don't do one thing God has called you to do. Staying busy at a church is not fulfilling your destiny. It is the gift of helps administration, which can be good, but you gotta do what he's called you to do. A lot of people hide behind doing something good instead of tackling the God things that he has for them. I love you guys. If you need prayer, you know, go to the website, jojodawson.net. Go to that contact button, you hit it. Send me a prayer request. I wanna pray for you. I wanna help you. Get out of the place that you're in and move forward in the things that God has, all right? Like I said, I couldn't sit in a chair this morning. <laughs> I'm a little too excited for that. So I had to stand up. This is my house. My wife designed it. I, I, I didn't do anything. I, I'm just paying for it, okay? Love you guys. Have a blessed day.